Where did COVID-19 really originate? This question has sparked countless debates worldwide. Theories abound, with the epicenter of discussions revolving around two main hypotheses. The first, the natural spillover theory, postulates that the virus originated from an animal, likely a bat, and jumped to humans, possibly in a wet market in Wuhan, China. The second theory, the lab leak hypothesis, suggests that the virus accidentally escaped from a lab in Wuhan, where coronaviruses were being studied. The evidence for both theories is circumstantial, and the question remains, where did the virus really come from? Today, we delve into the timeline of the lab leak theory and try to shed some light on this intriguing question. The lab leak theory suggests that the virus accidentally leaked from a lab in Wuhan, where similar coronaviruses were being studied. As we delve deeper into this theory, it's important to understand that this is not mere conjecture. The lab leak theory has some credible arguments that support it. For one, there's the geographical gap between the location of known bat coronaviruses and the first human cases. This gap is significantly bridged if we consider the possibility of a laboratory accident in Wuhan, which is where the first cases were reported. Furthermore, it is well documented that labs in Wuhan were conducting research on bat coronaviruses. The presence of these bat samples in the labs provides another piece of the puzzle that fits well with the lab leak theory. And let's not forget that lab accidents, while not commonplace, are not unheard of either. But like any theory, the lab leak theory has its detractors as well. Some argue that it's more likely for the virus to have jumped from animals to humans, possibly at a wet market in Wuhan, as has been the case with similar viruses in the past. Others have pointed out that there's no definitive evidence to pin the leakage on a lab, and that the lab leak theory has been used to fuel unfounded conspiracy theories. Evidence-wise, it's a bit of a mixed bag. While there's no smoking gun that definitively proves the lab leak theory, there's also no evidence that categorically disproves it. The circumstantial evidence that does exist can be interpreted in multiple ways, depending on one's perspective. It's important to keep in mind that the lab leak theory is just that, a theory. It's one possible explanation among many, and while it has its share of supporters and detractors, it's ultimately up to the scientific community to continue investigating and arrive at a consensus. While this theory has faced pushback and has been the subject of conspiracy theories, it remains one of the most debated theories about the origins of COVID-19. To understand the lab leak theory, we must first take a look at the timeline of events that have unfolded since the outbreak. Our story begins in late November of 2019. A new virus starts to circulate within the Huanan seafood market in Wuhan, China. The virus likely crosses from animals to humans through at least two transmission events according to studies published in the journal Science. Fast forward to June of 2021, and we find ourselves in the midst of a global pandemic, with the origins of the virus sparking intense debate. Two main theories rise to the surface, the natural spillover theory and the lab leak theory. The former suggests that the virus originated from a bat and jumped to humans through an intermediary animal, possibly at the Wuhan market. The latter proposes that the virus accidentally leaked from a lab in Wuhan where similar coronaviruses were being studied. However, the scientific evidence for both theories remains circumstantial. The natural spillover theory is supported by historical precedent and the presence of bat coronaviruses in the area. The lab leak theory, on the other hand, is supported by the geographic gap between the location of known bat coronaviruses and the first human cases, the presence of bat samples in Wuhan labs, and the possibility of lab accidents. By July of 2022, two newly published studies strengthen the theory that the Huanan seafood market was the likely epicenter of the pandemic. These studies suggest that the virus was probably present in live animals sold at the market, and that the earliest cases were centered among vendors and shoppers at the market. However, the narrative takes a twist in April of 2023, when a Chinese scientist, Tong Yigang, claims that the COVID-19 virus may have originated from humans. Tong bases his argument on the genetic sequences of viral samples taken from the Huanan seafood market, stating that these sequences are almost identical to those of infected patients. While the U.S. Department of Energy assesses that the virus was most likely the result of a laboratory accident, it marks this determination as a low-confidence one. Despite the ongoing debate and multiple theories, the origin of the virus remains uncertain. This timeline has been at the heart of the lab leak theory and continues to be a topic of intense research and debate. 
However, not everyone agrees with the lab leak theory. Indeed, a significant number of scientists and researchers have alternate theories about the origins of COVID-19. Among the most prominent of these is the natural spillover theory. This theory suggests that the virus originated from a bat and jumped to humans through an intermediary animal. This isn't a far-fetched idea, as similar scenarios have happened in the past with other viruses. Two studies published in the journal Science lend credence to this theory. These studies indicate that the Huanan seafood market in Wuhan, China, was likely the epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic. The researchers believe that the virus was present in live animals sold at the market and crossed from animals to humans through at least two transmission events. This natural spillover theory is supported by historical precedent, the presence of bat coronaviruses, increased human-bat interactions, and the proximity of the virus to markets in Wuhan. But just like the lab leak theory, there is no definitive evidence to fully back this theory. Chinese scientist Tong Yigang even suggests that the virus may have originated from humans. He bases this on the genetic sequences of viral samples taken from the Huanan seafood market, which he claims are almost identical to those of infected patients. However, this claim has faced criticism and requires further scientific examination. Another researcher, Zhou Lei, called for global scientific collaboration in tracing the origins of the virus. He made it clear that the site where COVID-19 was first discovered may not be where it originated. This implies that the search for the true origins of the virus should not be limited to Wuhan or any other specific location. The counter-arguments to the lab leak theory are diverse and complex, just like the pandemic itself. They remind us that the search for the truth is an ongoing process, and that each theory, be it lab leak or natural spillover, deserves a thorough and impartial investigation. While the lab leak theory has its supporters, it also has its critics, making the search for the true origins of COVID-19 all the more challenging. Regardless of where the virus originated, the implications of this pandemic are far-reaching. The world as we knew it has been forever changed, impacting our lives on a scale that's hard to fully comprehend. From the way we work, study, interact, and even think about health and safety, the ripples of this pandemic will be felt for generations to come. But let's focus on why understanding the origins of the virus is so crucial. First, it's about preventing future pandemics. Knowing where and how the virus crossed into humans can guide strategies to monitor and control similar situations in the future. It can help us strengthen our surveillance systems, especially in hotspots where animal-to-human transmission is likely to occur. It's about being proactive, rather than reactive. Secondly, understanding the origins can inform our scientific research and public health responses. If the virus did indeed leak from a lab, it raises serious questions about the safety protocols in place, not just in Wuhan, but in labs around the world studying dangerous pathogens. It would necessitate a global re-evaluation of lab safety standards and practices. On the other hand, if the virus originated from a wet market or a similar setting, it underscores the need for stricter regulations and vigilance over wildlife trade and consumption. It's a wake-up call to rethink our relationship with nature, as the destruction of natural habitats increases the risk of zoonotic diseases. Lastly, it's about accountability and transparency. An honest, thorough investigation into the origins of the virus is essential to rebuild trust at a global level. It demands international cooperation, a commitment to truth, and a collective effort to learn from our mistakes, so we can better prepare for future health crises. As we continue to grapple with the effects of this pandemic, understanding its origins remains a crucial piece of the puzzle, because when it comes to public health, knowledge isn't just power, it's our best defense. The debate about the origins of COVID-19 is far from over. We've explored the lab leak theory tracing its timeline and unveiling its details. We've also examined the counter-arguments emphasizing that the scientific community remains divided. The theory of a laboratory accident, while controversial, has not been conclusively ruled out. This ongoing debate underscores the importance of transparency and thorough investigation in our quest to understand the virus's origins. While the quest for truth continues, one thing is clear. Understanding the origins of this virus is vital for our future.